Wednesday morning, Jimmy Dale made it back here from Texas. And while he's here, we're hoping to get his Mustang put back together with a fresh engine, transmission, and a brand new torque converter. But the Mustang isn't the only thing in need of dire repair. When Jimmy towed his Mustang up here a couple of weeks ago, he had talked to Uncle Bucko about some problems he's having with his race car trailer. First of all, his trailer doesn't have a tongue jack, so that makes it a little difficult to get hooked up. But that's not the only problem. The trailer needs some leaf spring repair as well, but at least his Grom runs good. Anyway, Jimmy and I head up towards Bob's to go visit him at the machine shop to see how things are coming along with Jimmy's engine. Bob was working on assembling connecting rods and pistons, checking piston to valve clearance, and degreeing the cam. I'm trying to get my nose, I'm trying to get the nose shot. Here, let me give you the nose shot. While Jimmy Dale and I are on our way up to Bob's, Jeremy's back at my shop digging into the trailer and compiling a list of parts that we need and getting everything ordered in from Mark down at A1. Anyway, when we got up to Bob's, Jimmy realized pretty quick there's other people up there at Bob's shop that would like to have a chain similar to Bob's. Got your own chain. Got my own chain, had to make it. Bob ain't got nothing on you, does he? No, that's right. I'm sick of looking at his walking around all day. Bob was pretty busy showing Jimmy how to check all the clearances on his engine and discussing with him his cam card, degreeing the camshaft in, and showing Jimmy how to check piston to valve clearance. Jimmy's day was going pretty good until Bob started to add up all the parts and labor, and Jimmy quickly realized that he may have a problem. Yeah, uh, you don't have to put this in your video, but if you want to, that would definitely help out my bullshit, all right? Your bullshit? So, yeah, yeah. So I came to Ohio, ran up a bill way higher than I want to admit way higher all right now i'm not <laughs> sure how we're gonna get our motor back so i got this great idea hey bob's charging a reasonable price all right uh i'll put these on the website these are the pistons and rods that came out of magic johnson for a hundred dollar bill shipped is that here fill that is that is that too much to ship for a hundred bucks uh, you think they'll buy it no you don't think they'll buy it? No, are you gonna autograph them or something? Shit, I mean, if my autograph makes them buy it, yeah, I'll autograph all of them. I, I'll have everybody Jimmy, in you SRC autograph Look, look, your trailer's in like five pieces at my shop. I can't, yeah, tell them to quit working on it. We can't afford that. Well, I've got news for Jimmy. At this point, there's no turning back. So, I know you're from Texas, so here we go. Houston, we have a problem. How Jimmy managed to tow that Mustang all the way up here from Texas, I'm sure I don't know. But I can tell you one thing, there isn't but about two miles left in this trailer before the axles fall out from underneath of it and it breaks in half. But Jimmy being Jimmy, he's worried about what it's gonna cost. You know, we were joking last time about me getting a job at Mark's, but... It's probably gonna have to happen. We should hit him up. And I was just calling Dion to see if your transmission's done, plus your converter's up at Bubba's. What are you gonna do, uh, Jimmy? You wanna buy Grom? Other than selling his Grom, Jimmy decided to go out and maybe panhandle along the road and beg for money. But when that didn't work out, he came up with a new idea. All right, folks, you guys need to get over to jimmydaleracing.com. You can get a mullet wig just like this one and help Jimmy pay for his engine, all right? We gotta sell a whole bunch of mullet wigs, little wings. Wait, let's talk about this. <laughs> Mullets, little wings, and raccoon hats, I can ship those out today. ASAP. If you're ordering a t-shirt, it's got to wait for me to get back to Texas. So order a little wing, raccoon hat, or a mullet wig. I'll get it out as, like today, and then we'll be able to afford our engine. Yep. Sounds like a good idea. Sounds like a good idea. In the meantime, I told Jeremy, cease and desist working on Jimmy's trailer as there seems to be a budget deficit. So Jeremy went up to the farm and switched gears and started working on Billy's dually. It's got a problem in the front end with the front universal joints. That's the noise he's hearing. Got to get this really majorly rusted nut off the axle shaft. I've got just the tool for that here. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's my zero given gun. Zero will be given. Having the right tool at all times is super important to productivity. About the time Jeremy was pulling Billy's truck apart to check the front end, Jimmy Dale and I were on our way back to my house, and that's when I found this problem. A derby car of unknown origin and condition. Kenny, who organized this shit show? Okay, that's two years ago when Billy wanted to do this, and it's just kind of now evolving. Yeah, it's evolved into my freaking yard. How many can you run on the oval at once? About three or four? Two. Two? Three. Listen, I gotta clean all this shit up so we can build a shop here in a few months. 
And look, I got a freaking Maverick here now, and now I've got this piece of shit. Listen, take the Billy's worth farm. Now you're talking. <laughs> the guys claim that this car actually does run and drive, but my question is, will it make the trip to Billy's house? We figure if this car will make 20 or 30 laps consecutively without breaking down, the car should probably be able to make it to Billy's house without any problems. <laughs> and although Robbie and Jimmy Dale were doing a pretty good job of putting the car through its paces, I decided further testing was required. Our testing revealed a cooling system problem that probably should be dealt with before the car hits the road. Anyway, that brings us to Thursday morning. Now, Thursday, I had planned on taking the Malibu down to National Trail Raceway for a private test and tune. The problem is when I came out, the battery was dead in the car and my jumper cables are in about the same condition as my jump box. Both were inoperable. So June Pup and I hopped in the 64 to go down and see Mark. And when we pulled in down there, my brother's on the phone trying to guess Who's listening into the conversation? Oh, well, I don't know. That's, I wouldn't say that quite that, but. No. We're going for a long what? Okay. Your boss. Oh, the boss is here. Oh, oh. <laughs> so I'm only coming up with this one number there, Homer. Uh, so the. Well, you, you squeeze it a little harder. <laughs> It'll He's going to destroy something. He's working on it. You sent me the VIN code, didn't you? Yes. Okay. Let me try running that once just to see, and I'll call you back. All right. I'm going to try to right. put a squeeze on it. See if I, I mean, I don't know. Right. I'm going to put a squeeze on you if you don't get it done. Uh-oh. Oh, God. Here we go. I'll, I go. Okay. Bye. Bye. What the hell is he working on? He's working on Billy's truck. The front axle oh, joints. God. He can't get him in the... Things. No shit. Yeah. Well, I need a battery. Oh, I see that. It's a, oh, I wonder what this is out of. So, give me a new pair of these adapters. Adapter kits. Yeah. We got those. We got those in stock. Good. I picked out a new set of jumper cables, and Mark got me a battery, and then he hits me with another sales tactic. Look at that. What do you got now? Towelzilla. Towelzilla. The ultimate wiping towel. I know as much as you wash stuff. These will come in very handy down at the shop. You're shelf. always trying to extra sell me. Well, I am because you need these. It's I, I try to give the customer what they need and not always what they want. His sales tactic worked and Mark's timing is impeccable because the next thing I was about to do once I got the battery swapped out of the Malibu was take it through the car wash and give it a bath. Since I'm already running late, it was easier for me just to take the car up to the car wash and run it through and I figured I'd use those towels to dry the car off after I got done. I put them to the test on my wheels. These bead locks hold water, and every time I wash the car, there's always a bunch left in the wheel. But this Towelzilla thing that Mark sold me soaked it right up in a couple of seconds. After I finished drying the car off, I drove it back to the shop and loaded up some fuel, some tools, and anything and everything I thought I might need to start tuning in the 750 carburetor on the Malibu today. You ready? I'm ready, you ready? I'm ready. What are we waiting on then? Let's go. Let's go. Now today I'm gonna to let Jimmy Dale drive the Malibu and I'm gonna film, which will allow me to watch the car make a pass and I can hear the engine and how well it accelerates off the starting line when Jimmy hits the gas. Sometimes it's a lot easier to tune the engine from standing on the starting line rather than inside the car with a helmet on. Now since the Malibu doesn't have a trans brake, we're having to foot brake the car right off an idle. Now generally on motor, the Malibu will 60 foot between 140 and 145, depending on the air and, of course, the track conditions. You ready for this, Jimmy Dale? Yeah, you act like I ain't ever been six seconds in that model. <laughs> All right, so it's got a 750 carburetor on it today. We're just trying something a little different, and I want to make sure the 750 foot brake's okay. Let's go make a lick. Now, Jimmy's fully capable of driving this car. The only concern I have is how quickly the transmission needs to be shifted from first into second gear. You've got to be ready for it. 
It happens in just over one second, even on motor. And when the Malibu actually leaves on nitrous, it happens in under a second. Jimmy absolutely nailed both shift points from one to two and two to three, which netted a new personal best for the Malibu quarter mile on motor. Man. It felt like it did a wheelie. It did. It did a wheelie? Yeah. I was, I was Dude, it, it went 145, 60 foot, 1052 at 126 on motor. I, I could have hit it a little harder. I've never made a quarter mile pass my entire life. That was it? Yeah. That's, that's awesome, I'm dude. I'm glad to stay in it. Like, <laughs> oh, Where did you have the tires set? 14 and a half. That's where I told you put them. That's perfect. Perfect. Worked out good. We'll have to watch the video, but dude, the thing left, it left the front wheels in here. It really felt, I could feel it come down. So yeah. at the end of the track, I told the GoPro, I said, I think I did a wheelie. <laughs> I think I did. But, dude, it was great. Yeah, it left really good. That's just on the little seven. That's my street carburetor. That's the one I just cruise around on. After that first hit, we realized there was no need to worry about tuning this carburetor today. The wheelie was really cool. That was <laughs> awesome. But we could go faster if we didn't do a wheelie. Right. You know, if, the, if the car was pushing itself forward, right. instead of pushing itself to the moon. That probably would have been a low 140, 60 foot. I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Well, let's go to lunch. We'll discuss. Let's go to lunch and we'll discuss. Since the carburetor's in pretty good shape, we kicked the air conditioning on in the Malibu and we set out for Jacktown to go have lunch just a few miles up the road from the track at a little place called Crossroads Pub and Grub. What better way to spend your afternoon with your buddy from Texas than talking about shock settings and eating hamburgers? What'd you get there, Jimmy? Chipotle burgers. Wait, call it Crossroads burgers. My bad. Crossroads burgers. A little hot. A little hot. Yeah. A little hot. <laughs> After lunch, we decided to head back to the track and make a few changes to the Malibu suspension setup and rear tire pressure. Jimmy wanted to stiffen the rebound in the front shocks with three clicks and add about three and a half pounds of air pressure to the rear tires. This should net us a faster 60 foot and a lower overall ET. There's also a possibility that the car could pick up one or two miles an hour. Jimmy made two more passes after we got back to the track from lunch. But with the track temperature and the air temperature rising, we found ourselves in an uphill battle trying to get the car to go any faster than what it did earlier. So what we're running into here is when you stick it in high gear, you look down at the air fuel ratio. It took me three passes to be able to do that. But right, yeah, but I mean, it, you take, it takes time. comfortable with the car, yeah. Yeah, so when you stick it in high gear, you look down at the air fuel and it shows it's going lean on the big end. And I yeah. would say that it's still running the original stock fuel lines from the tank, the whole thing. There's no sump and mechanical pump. So I'm thinking maybe it probably could pick up quarter mile if it had an electric pump and proper fuel lines and you know. Yeah, but that wouldn't be street car. No, I don't want to listen to electric pump. And it does yeah. fine in the eighth. It does great in the eighth. It doesn't have any issues at the eighth. It was still well in the 12, 12, five to one AFRs. Yeah. And it wasn't until I got it in third and really started, you know, screaming out the back door right. that it kind of lost its lung, so right, to speak. Right, right, right. You can see in the past, it really don't make a difference what we do to this car, guys. We went, <laughs> we put three clicks in the front to get the wheelie to go away, and it didn't care. We put three PSI in the rear tires, didn't care. So <laughs> the car's just so consistent, it is what it is. It's, and look, this is what I mean by it is what it is. Well, okay, so listen, it's getting hotter and the yeah. density altitude's going higher. That's true. So typically That's true. here at this track during the day, like we made our first lick, it, when I was bracket racing here, we would slow down four or five hundreds in the middle of the day. That's where we're at, middle of the day. We're in the middle of the day yeah. and we're still running the same number. So technically uh, we probably picked the car up four or five, but the density altitude and the track temperature has gone up. So we're still running the same. That's a good point. Now, if you take this car back out here tonight after the sun's going down around seven or eight o'clock and hit it, 
look out. It's going to go 1045 probably. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good point. So. But three 1050 passes. Went to, we went what to What to go, 52, 53, on, 53? Yeah. I think our first pass of the day was this one right here, this wrinkly up one. It went 125, 94. Remember, air was better right here. Yeah. 10, or 125.9, so call it 126. But uh, we went 125.94, then we went 125.39, then we went 125.00. So you could tell the air is just, just running air. away from us. You yeah, know, the air is in the air at this point. Yeah, I think that's all it is. Yeah. And that last pass, 18 pounds of air in the rear tire. Come on. Ate it like it wasn't shit. Like it wasn't shit. Like it wasn't shit. After we got done down at the track, Jimmy and I came back to my house and I went out to try and get my grass cut before it rains again. That's when I realized there were some problems out there with the derby car. Kenny decided to detail the car today and use the power washer under the hood. And now the ignition system is waterlogged and the engine won't run. After surviving its initial test drive on the RC track out back, the Crown Vic ultimately was taken out by Kenny's detailing practices. Eventually they got the car to start, but it won't stay running. Now Kenny's done a bang up job cleaning the car up and detailing it, but power washing underneath the hood has possibly destroyed our chances at taking it to the Derby. At this point, the plan is to keep the car running and hopefully the engine will dry out and the ignition system problems will improve. So now not only do I have another junk vehicle sitting in my yard out back, the guys are asking to start buying parts for it. And since I know where they're going to try and order parts from, I decided to go down and put a bug in Mark's ear when we went down to pick up parts for Jimmy's engine this morning. First and foremost, if Kenny Powers or anyone from my shop calls you for parts for a Ford Crown Vic, yes, has that already happened? It has. <gasps> Have you already dispersed parts for a Crown Vic? No. But In they've the already process, called. They've already called. For what? Spark plug. Possibly multiple coils. They go. I'm not sure. They go on Billy's account. I paid Kenny eight hours yesterday to detail a derby car. And in detailing the derby car, he power washed under the hood and turned a running derby car into a non running oh, derby car. Yeah, that was probably a bad move. Well, that makes a lot of sense. So, no parts on my account for nope. any Crown Vix. Not zero. So anyway, after we picked up a set of spark plugs, oil and oil filter down at Mark's, Jimmy and I made our way up to Bob's machine shop. Bob hasn't wasted any time up there working on these engines. When we walked in the assembly room, Bob was finishing up Billy's aluminum short block and Jimmy's engine was ready for an oil pan and cylinder heads. So me and Jimmy got busy bolting that stuff on his engine while back at the shop, Uncle Buckwheat is still working on Jimmy's trailer. Almost better than new. It looks really good, except for he's bolted the equalizers on upside down. And there I was, trying to fix a trailer and place an axle with no axle mounts. Chumpy dropped the ball. While Jeremy continues to wait on some parts for Mark, he went ahead and swapped out one bent axle for one brand new axle. And Jimmy and I were just about finished up up at the machine shop working on his engine for the day. Bob decided he wanted to go ahead and get Jimmy's lifters scratched for oiling before he went home. Uncle Bob, I'm about to head home so I can get this video done, get it uploaded. All right. When it goes up, you're gonna wanna sit down with a nice cold beverage and relax for a little bit. <laughs> so with that, Jimmy and I headed back to my shop to see how things were going back there 
as the kids have been in there working on my old Nova. I've got to be honest, I was pretty excited to hear this thing run and see it move itself in and out of the garage for the first time in almost six years. Well, well, well. It's Look, been a while. It's been a minute. It's been a while. You're back. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Your hair looks pretty tonight. Thank you. All right, what do you got for me here, Squirrely Locks? A few details. Oh, boy. And... So this is weather dependent now. Weather dependent? Yeah, if it's starting to rain tomorrow, we're going to not go. So you're going to jump right into that first? Because I had that last. Oh. <laughs> well, well, we'll jump into that first. Okay. So, um, you said details, that's where I'm headed. Well, I had lots of details. Oh, God. <laughs> Listen, so this video is already long. We okay. got to get this going. We had talked about uh, going to Sensi Street Nights, but as you can hear, it's pouring rain here. Uh, there's a chance of rain tomorrow. I'm not sure that we're going to make the, uh, the drive down given the weather. Not 100% sure. Okay. So, what else? Uh, we need to do our April giveaway. Right. So you got sick for about a week here, and I didn't push the, you know, I knew you weren't feeling good. But now that you're feeling better, I want to do it. All right. So let's do it. Are we ready? Yep. I've got your numbers posted in the laptop. You get to hit generate. All right. And I'll put in the number. What do, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, what are we giving away? away? Yeah. Okay. We're so getting ahead of ourselves. We're the rusty. The main winner is getting a custom OMG sign. Mm-hmm. And the other three winners are getting a Malibu poster. You can oh. show, them, show them the picture. So this is a picture of my Malibu down at the gut, Yellow Belly yeah. in Grand Prairie, Texas. Yes. When I won the, what was that? Cheap Street. Cheap Street. Yeah, yeah. I won the Cheap Street Got class. chain. Yeah, that's where I won my chain. <laughs> and that picture was taken by Caitlin Ward, which I adore her. She's a great photographer. Okay. And so, yeah. I'm going to give away posters. All righty. So you hit generate. Now, this first one's the sign, right? Yep. All right. Here we go. You ready? Yep. Generate. Number 10667. Shannon Mendoza from Hawaii. Oh, boy. <laughs> that one's going to take a trip. Okay. Shannon Mendoza. Write that down. Shannon Mendoza. And the number is 10667. That was the order number. Yep. All right, here we go. Generate. This is for a poster. 10625. That is Christian Gallagher from Ironton, Ohio. Huh. So the poster's not going too far. <laughs> no, but the sign is. Yeah, okay. So you ready for the third one? 10625. Got it. Okay, here we go. One more time. 10671. Mary... Myers from Council Grove, Kansas. Huh. Okay. So those are the posters. Oh, no. One more. I said three posters. No, you said two. No. Oh, all right. Posters, yeah. Okay. Far be it for me to cheat somebody out of something. <laughs> oh, boy. 10666. <sighs> Hit generate again. No. I can't. You told me to do uh... it. I was reluctant. <laughs> I was reluctant, and you forced the issue, and there it comes. Mike Smith, Obets, Mike Smith Ohio. and Obets. <laughs> Mike Smith and Obets gets a poster. All right. So there we have it. Okay. Okay, I have more details. And Vicky's going to contact you guys and arrange everything. Yes. Yeah, okay. I'll email everybody and let them know. Okay, four minutes. Oh, Okay. Uh, can you show them? I got new tank tops on the yep, website. We got new tank tops up on the website. That's a new merch I've thing. I've had a lot of people ask me at events and email me, hey, get tank tops. So I finally did. Okay, tank tops. What mm -hmm. else? Four um, minutes, 13 let's seconds. Let's talk about the Mustang giveaway. Uh oh. The Mustang giveaway. So uh, you have to go to streetracingchannel.com. Any, any 
stuff that you buy, every dollar spent is an entry. Okay. Like if you buy a shirt and it's $28, yep. then that's 28 entries. Right. You have clear till June 12th. Yep. So you have time. Um, and that's for the gray Mustang sitting outside. That is for the gray Mustang. Okay, what else? Also, please be patient. It is a big undertaking, this giveaway. And we have people emailing, I didn't get it, I didn't get it yet, I didn't get it yet. And well, starting PayPal claims. Yeah, they're starting PayPal claims. And it's like, Allison needs to be focused on getting the orders shipped and not answering all PayPal these PayPal claims. Yeah. You guys are really... <laughs> I'm not going to say just, it. Just... Be patient. Yes, be patient. Please. Everybody's going to get their stuff. Nobody's but... been forgotten. Nobody's left out. Five minutes, 15 seconds, and we got to roll. <laughs> Come on. But, so it's, well, you, you're hurrying me, and then I go blank. This video is 20 minutes long, and now go it's 25 minutes long. Sorry. It's going to take forever to go upload. Go back and clip out something of Jimmy Dale's. It'll, I, no. I should get. Let's get this on the road. <laughs> Come on. Okay, Um. so. Yeah, so the the Mustang giveaway, those items were pre-sale. So that doesn't mean you're going to get it in two days Enough. like Amazon. Be patient. Okay, be patient. Unlike um, me. We're going on six minutes now. I think that's all. Thank the Lord. Done? I know what I forgot. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms you forgot. When is it? Sunday. That I haven't forgotten yet. No, but listen, you're not going to have another video out until it's passed. So, <laughs> happy Mother's Day to my mom, your mom, all the moms. You don't have to do this in a video. Yeah, I do. Happy Mother's Day. Act like you mean it. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.